You know, on the web, just like any other industry, we like our special terms. And you've probably come across, or you may have come across, the web one, web two, and now web three. And, and where are we going with all of this? Well, that's what I want to try and explain now, so that when you get caught up in those conversations, you've got a basic understanding, and you're not just going to have the smokes and mirrors and the blinded by science bit that some of these techies want to do. Okay, so it's very, very simple. Web 1. So when the web started, it was about sharing information. So we're going to show an example now on screen um, of a website that looks really, really great, but of course, it's Web 1. It's about sharing information. Okay, well, what about Web 2? What happened? So Web 2 moves it on a level and says this now is about interaction. So I'm going to share my information, but I want people to interact with it. And we can see on this particular website that we've got areas where people can uh, make comments on a blog or uh, they can get involved and win stuff on a competition, uh, pick fruit from a tree. You know, you've got to work out something that works with your brand, but Web2 is all about interaction. So think about social media when you think Web2, because social media really is very Web2. Okay. So Web 1 is all about sharing information. Web 2 is all about getting some interaction. So what's this Web 3? Well, Web 3, in essence, is about the computer doing smart stuff. So now, have a look at this website, Amazon.com. Okay, so on Amazon.com, what we're seeing here is that the computer, the server uh, running the website, is actually choosing recommendations for me. So it's not me necessarily interacting with it, although of course I have to, um, but it's the web server interacting with me. It's not just sharing information about everything that Amazon has got to offer, it's choosing things intelligently on my behalf. So it's making recommendations for me. So that is uh, Web3. Now, because of the timing, you'll hear things in Web3 about mobile as well and mobile apps. And we're, you know, we're, we're talking about mobiles a lot because it is important. Um, but those are the sort of advancements we've seen. So if you want to simplify it, and I suggest that you do, think of it as quite simply this. Web1, it's about sharing information. It's one way. Okay, Web2. This is about interaction, so it's two-way. Web 3, this is about the interaction, but the server, the web server, also being pretty smart. So imagine now this is three-way. Okay, Web 1, one-way communication. Web 2, two-way communication. Web 3, three-way communication. The person delivering the content, the computer and the server involved in delivering the content, and you, the person. Okay, the reason why you might want to know that uh, piece of information about Web 1, 2, and 3 is just so that you can talk with an education uh, when you're talking with the web developers and the techies. Now, it's absolutely relevant what we call them Web 1, 2, and 3, so I don't want you to get tied up on it. I want you to just understand where we're going as a web technology, as a new media technology. The more uh, interaction we can have with our visitors, the better. And if we can help them by suggesting things to them, and that's the smart technology, the pieces that we did talk about in Web3, then that's all the better. So it's more important that you understand where we're going as a technology, where things are progressing, rather than necessarily the terms. I've given you the terms just so that you can speak with some kind of education on the subject if the techie comes in and tries once again to blind you with science. Remember, all of this stuff, it's really, really simple, but quite often people want to make it more complicated than it is. Okay, so that was a good session we've just had on Web 1, 2, and 3. Just remember, it's more important what we're trying to achieve than the words that we use to describe it.